You're listening to Parasearch Radio. News, views and reviews from the world of the paranormal from across the UK and beyond. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web. Parasearch UK Radio. Parasearch Radio, broadcasting to the UK and beyond. The views and opinions expressed by presenters and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Parasearch Radio or its affiliates and sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. You're listening to The Supernatural Chat Show with your host, Sean Cadman, only on Parasearch Radio. Good evening, everybody, and welcome once again to the Supernatural Chat Show with me, your host, Sean Cadman. Well, tonight, what can I say about tonight's guest? Probably one of the busiest people in the paranormal. She's got fingers in more projects than you can shake a stick at, and one of the very, very best people you can possibly know in the paranormal. I'd like to welcome my co owner of Paraforce UK, no other than Vivian Powell. Are you there, Viv? Oh, Sean, you say such the nicest things. <laughs> was that OK, was it? Yeah. We d- I don't call you my bro for nothing, you know. People no. don't realise our relationship, do they? They don't, no. That's it. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> so, I mean, um, most people listening, obviously, know a little bit about yourself, about what you do and things like that. If you just want to... Have a little yak about yourself, what you do, what got you into the paranormal? Um, Well, I've been seeing spirits since I was about three years old, as you know, Sean. Uh, One of my earliest childhood memories was one of spirit. And it wasn't very nice. I had a rotten childhood growing up because of it. Um, It was awful. Um, And it sort of continued off and on until my teens, and it sort of backed off a little bit then after I went through, let's say, puberty it backed off after after that um but then it came back with a vengeance um in my early 20s and i ended up going to a spiritualist church um joining a circle with john reese he bought me uh, he bought me on i started doing platform uh from there it was um you know, from the churches, it's helping people within their homes that had problems. It wasn't just all this platform mediumship. It was going into people's homes and and helping them. Um, you know, in that time, I studied so hard with the College of Psychic Studies, um, seminars, oh, you name it, I've done it. Got the T-shirt. I mean, the, re- the research that I did that went along with it. Um, studying some of the darker stuff but not practicing um, I did get to meet some very colorful characters um, most of them I must say are not alive today um, but they did help me along my pathway and I owe them a lot I know that I don't necessarily agree with what they did but they gave me the insights as to what could happen I mean in the 80s um, all the black magic and stuff that happened there I mean, as you know Sean it was rife so yeah caused a lot of problems but uh from there i was asked to um go on a pilot tv show as a medium if you like into ghost hunting that's many 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 moons ago um nothing ever came of it but that really sort of um gave me the ghost hunting bug part of it if you like and so from there it slowly sort of crept in well um i want to prove without a shadow of a doubt that spirit actually does exist and what they can do so i went down the pathway of being a paranormal investigator but with a slight cheat 
by using spirit and <laughs> by uh, I'm not explaining it very well, but I do fine. <laughs> but because I can sort of link in and uh, psychometry on the buildings and things like that. Um, I know exactly where to go. Uh, I mean, we normally get told to take about, take 50 pictures in this room and out of those 50 pictures, something's going to show up because my guides have already told me, you know, yeah. uh, it does work. You, I mean, you've seen the proof, haven't you, Sean? Yeah, yeah, I have, yeah. Pictures. So, um, yeah, so, yeah, that's what I do. Um I don't know what else to tell you. You put me on the spot now. Hello. Well, I know most of it, but it's for, for our listeners. Um, I mean, I know you often say that there's a big difference between platform mediumship and mediumship on a paranormal investigation. Yes. What's for people that don't know? What sort of differences are there on that? Platform mediumship, for example. Um, if I was uh, to platform mediumship is having messages from loved ones that have passed over. Right. So it's like going into a spiritualist church or buying a ticket to go and see Derek Okora live on stage. I, I use him as an example. He's going to give you a platform mediumship. He's going to bring through messages from loved ones in spirit and make you go home feeling all lovely and gooey inside. Right. That's platform mediumship. Paranormal mediumship is linking into the, uh, I'm going to use the word entities, okay? <laughs> so <laughs> it's linking into entities or the building or the land, um, you know, just making that connection with spirit on that level, which is completely different from the platform mediumship. Find out what's going on. Why are they there? What are they doing? You know, with a residual haunting, as you know, Sean, you're never going to have a conversation with yeah. something like that yeah. but but you can read uh by use of psychometry you can read the building or link into items that, that are in certain rooms that are causing this phenomena to happen and find out exactly what went on why it's happening and and relay the story you know so yeah. there, are, there are big differences between the two um and a lot of people don't realize there is an actual third where it's I wouldn't want to label it as anything, but it's the removal of unwanted guests. And right. um, you'll see a lot of mediums or self-proclaimed mediums saying that moving something into the light is moving it on. Yeah. I beg to differ. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to upset a lot of people now. But, um, <laughs> um uh, it, it's not as easy as that. If something, were, if you could put something into the light and move it on, then you know there wouldn't be half the problems that we have today. Um, yeah. it, it, it's a grey area. That is, um, there's a lot. There's lots of facets that goes with that, you know. But um, maybe that's another show. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that in a way can go into that. What happened at the Pontefract House a couple of weeks ago with the. This that medium proclaimed that it moved on the black monk that haunts the place. I mean, whether the black monk story is true or not, would that actually be an easy thing as he made it out to do? What moving it into the light? Yes, something no. that's been there for hundreds of years. No, no, no. I mean, if it's something that didn't want to go into the light for a start, he's going to have a big fight on his hands. You know. Um, if it jumped into him and he was able to march it off the property and get it onto consecrated ground and all the rest of it, might have been a different story. But I doubt very much whether he did any of that. None whatsoever. A big publicity stunt. I think so. You know, and it's and it was a good one. You got to hand it to him. Yeah, it, it worked. Did bring a lot of, <laughs> bring a lot of Maybe I should try that, Sean. We go. Yeah, we go that's where we're going wrong, Sean. Must be. Must be. <laughs> Um, do you find it difficult when you're on just a paranormal investigation that doesn't need any of your mediumship gifts to just concentrate on the investigating without wanting to open? Um, sometimes, Sean, you, well, you know that spirit can open you up. You've got no choice. If they want to have this conversation with you, they see, I call it shining, um, 
I've got all these weird and wonderful names for everything, but um, they know, they see you straight away. You glow more than the rest of the other people there. They know that they can come to you and uh, harass you until you listen to them sort of thing. And a good medium will always try and close themselves down, i.e. not allow them to be taken over, not allow them, you know, trans mediumships. You've seen me do that, Sean. Yeah, yeah. And pushing them away and not allowing them to step into you, uh, not allowing them to sort of take it away from the investigation. Because you find that a lot of people that, especially on a, a public event, they come and do an investigation with the public and you'll get bom- bombarded with, I don't know, Sarah, Sarah's grandfather wants to come and have a chat and give her a message. Richard's uh, great nana is she's turned up and she wants to tell him where he's lost his 50 quid and where he'll find it, you know, all that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah. And, um, you know, I mean, that takes it away from the, the investigation itself. You know, you don't want to be bogged down with doing stuff like that. Yeah. It's, it's not what I that, yeah. Uh, you got a question. Mark Pritchard has asked, Vivian, do you still do psychic art? I know when we met the first time, I'm sure that you did this. Do you pick up on this a lot when you go into places? <laughs> psychic art. I had to go at it, Rich, um, Mark. I was useless. I have done one or two um, uh, by, well, I don't know what happened there. I just thought I'd, I'd do a bit of automatic handwriting and ended up with this beautiful picture and if you know me i'm not an artist i can't draw for nothing i can, I can, I can do snoopy out of bush but that's about it you know <laughs> so if the, if the spirit of snoopy comes through it'll be all right <laughs> yeah i could do snoopy but you know it's funny you can work alongside psychic up psychic artists and um i have been oh god where was this i think it was I think it was in Barnes a long, long, long time ago in in uh, London, mm-hmm. and I had a go of doing platform work with um, the woman sitting next to me with all her pencils, and she was scribbling away as I was relaying the message. She was connecting with me, and and, and getting the pictures out and giving them to people. That was interesting, but it's not really something that I'm I'm into, to be honest, Mark. Um, but yeah, I hope Mark, I hope you're all right though, Mark, and doing well. I'll keep up the good work. He's he's been going off here, there, and everywhere. I've been I've been following Mark. He's he's a good guy. Definitely, yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, well, thank you, thank you for your question, Mark. I asked this one to Ryan Griffiths last week. What's your thoughts on the sudden mad influx of self-proclaimed mediums that are popping up left, right, and centre, starting to hold events and all sorts of things? Sean, I have to be <laughs> careful what I say now. <laughs> you know what I'm thinking immediately. You know what I'm thinking, and yeah. I'm, I'm going. I'm going to think about my words very carefully now. Okay. Right. Um, there has been a spate of frauds going on, and the biggest one of recent uh, months is Alias Sanctus. I'm going to say it. I don't care. Yeah. And that blew up big time. A lot of people lost money. They were hurt. Venues. I mean, the knock on effect was ridiculous. These people that are proclaiming to be mediums, um, when they've not had the proper training, I mean, anyone can pretend to link with a spirit. Good luck to you. You know, you're a good actor. But the damage they do is to the individual that's receiving the message. Yeah. Um, they haven't put the thought, the care, uh, the counselling, the, re- I mean, the reasons why people want a message in the first place. What if that, that one person had lost somebody recently and were going through a really bad grieving time? You know, um, I don't think they see the bigger picture, what they're actually doing. You know, you've got to be careful how you word things to people. And if you've not yeah. got that connection with spirit and they're not giving you the words to relay to them, you could be damaging that person so much. And I'm not just talking about going into homes or, you know, trying to clear spirits in there. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about even that something as silly as holding an event or, you know, I, I just think that they're very, very irresponsible. They're seeing um, money in front of them. They're doing it for yeah. money for no yeah. other reason. You can't 
govern mediums. You can't, you know, guide people, don't go with them, you know. There's no legislation in place for it. But what you can do is ask for references, yeah. ask if they hold any certificates, where have they uh, done their mediumship before, what churches have they served, what circles they've sat in, how they got their training, you know. It's a bit like the ghost hunting. You can ask people questions. I mean, if somebody's advertising, my advice would be don't go. A good medium will never advertise and they never charge. Yeah. That's, I, that's why I don't charge. I mean, you know me. I'll say, I'll oh, just get us a packet of fags or cup of tea, <laughs> cup of tea will do, yeah. you know, <laughs> or a <laughs> slice of cake with a cup of tea. That'll go down well, you know. But, you know, it's just like, it's just like public having common sense. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. it's common sense. Right, so we'll move on from the mediumship side and talk about this apparently something coming up called Paraforce UK. Oh yes. <laughs> me, me and this guy called Sean, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Who's that? He's, oh, he's, um, he's some guy that I know. Um, I get on really well with him most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what... I mean, obviously, I know the answer to this one, but what started Paraforce UK? Why was it started up? For those so, that are listening that don't know. Shall we tell them, Sean? Go on, then. Well, we were involved, weren't we, with a, another event, let's say, back in 2014. Yes. And we picked up the pieces where other people had sort of just given up and, and left for for whatever reason. We won't go into that. And we ran with it, didn't we, Sean? We did. Uh, due to, I mean, we had also had a lot of message after the original event failed to sort of return for a second year. We had, I think both of us were inundated with messages about, oh. will you do something? Do you remember that sh- that time, Sean? I mean... Oh. I was I was ringing you and texting you messaging you saying, Sean, Sean, these people, I don't even know who they are. And you were like, yeah, it's the same with me. Yeah. <laughs> so the, I think, yeah, that was the birth, wasn't it, really, of Paraforce? They, did, they didn't realise, I don't think people realise what uh, we did behind the scenes uh, for that event. Um, if it weren't for us, hand on heart, I really do think that that event wouldn't have gone through, Sean. No, it is... At that time, like you say, we did a hell of a lot for the the guy that was arranging it all behind the scenes, the, the picking him up off the floor in tears and et cetera, et cetera. But it was his event, so we just stepped into the background. But even but even it, if the things like we did, like you arranged for all the um, pack testing to be done, I looked at all the legal aspects of it, all the insurances and all the rest of it, UK the UK laws that were... Yeah, didn't have a clue, did he? <laughs> <laughs> Bless him. But, um, but, but it, it, I suppose you could say it put us in good stead to start off Paraforce. It did. It, and, I mean, we had a really good friendship before that. I mean, yeah. for those that don't know, I've known Sean for quite a lot of years. Yes. yes. A lot, a lot, a lot of years. <laughs> many, many moons now. <laughs> but um, it, it sort of... Um, it solidified our friendship even more, though, didn't it? Because we went through thick and thin together. We cried together. We laughed together. We got excited together. And, um, you know, and Sarah as well and, and Andy, bless her. Um, we went, we, we've been through a lot and we continue to do so. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't think a lot of people out there that support us actually realise how much work and effort goes in every every week of every, of the year to get okay. these, these events going and the amount of emailing and messaging people and everything else, it takes up a heck of a lot of time to put yeah. on a two day convention. Yeah. I mean, um, it's like, it's not even just that though, is it Sean? I mean, we also get, um, Oh God, how can I word it without it being horrible for radio? <laughs> I'm trying to pick my words <laughs> carefully. But you also get the negativity that comes with it that yeah. also can be quite demoralising. I mean, I don't know if you remember, um, was it last year, year before, the first year when we had um, a, a gentleman, we, we shall uh, not mention any names, he tried to, I think he put the spa, tried to put the spanner in the works 
with us and also another um, convention that was starting up at the time as well. Yes. Um, so, um, I mean, it didn't amount to anything, but um, people just don't realise, I mean, as, as much as all the praise and all the pats on the backs and you've done all the, you done, you both did really well. Behind the scenes, me and Sean are like falling apart because we've had, uh, we've had negativity, bad reviews, all that sort yeah. of thing. You know, we get all that as well, as well as the good. That's it. I mean, for each one we've organised, this is our third year. I think every year there's something's crawled out of the woodwork that's attacked us and we've had to, calm everything down so to say say well look hang on oh well where's this coming from and yeah. people you don't see that because we cover that we don't want the negativity of the field that's not what power force is about no. but we get we get attacks from left right and center for doing what we do we also don't we we get um people saying or um, messaging us or um emailing us or whatever or ringing us saying oh this so-and-so people don't get involved with them or yeah. Do you know so and so? Oh, he's a, you know, and you think I don't know them. I don't want to get involved. Yeah, we, we also have the say. We also have the side as well where we've even got celebrity guests, guest speakers who won't work with other guest speakers. Oh yeah, oh, <laughs> they knew what we knew. Yeah, that is we, funny. We can approach a guest speaker, would you like to talk? Oh, yeah, lovely. As long as you get a list of people, as long as none of these are talking, then I'll come. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. oh, that is funny. I yeah. mean, people don't realise that we and you are behind the scenes and we're giggling and not laughing at them, but laughing because of it, you know? Yes, yeah. Um, it's, we... it's, it's mad. <laughs> it is, it is, it is. But uh, hey-ho, we live yes. and learn, don't we? We do. I mean, it's like I, I think I can speak for both of us. But it's like I've been asked, why don't you have some, like, example, ghost adventures over? Why don't you have such and such over? And what people don't realise, it's not a case of not wanting them over. It's a case, number one, the costs involved. Yeah. Number two, we like to try to promote the UK paranormal scene, not just your big TV stars. Yeah. I mean, like, so they don't realise that... You know, you're having to fly them over. You've got the costs of that. Then you've got the costs of when they're here. And then, oh, it, it, the list is endless, isn't it? You know. Yeah, um, yeah. But um, we, well, shall we just say we are working on it, you know, with every yeah. year that we grow. And I believe we are growing, aren't we, Sean? I think you would agree. Definitely, yeah, definitely. You know. It's, I mean, we're hoping, as far as we're really, to have the cup this year, some special guests, shall Ooh. we say. Oh, yes. I'm not going to say who it is. I'm not going to no. say who they are. But these guests are huge. They're yes. huge. Yes, um, so we, are. we won't be announcing anything until it's all signed, sealed and delivered. But it'll be a bit of a surprise for everybody that's coming, I think, this one. I think so. And I think um, they will be surprised um, and in awe. And they'll have a lot of questions to ask them. And... Yeah. Um, there might be a stampede. We... <laughs> <laughs> well, we like to do things different, don't we? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But, yeah, no, it's coming on. And if anyone wants um, a vendor, uh, wants a stall there to sell whatever you want to sell within reason, you know, um, contact us. So we've still got spots. Um, you'd be more than welcome. Come for one day. Come for the whole weekend. Me and Sean will go over and have a nosy and see what they've got to sell. Definitely. You have yeah. an if it's any good, we might even buy something. Yeah. <laughs> Get a bargain. Yeah, definitely. We like bargains. I mean, it's, uh, Ashley's just put, stick with it, though, as the conventions are fantastic places to bring individuals and teams together. They are great for chatting about future subjects. Thank you for your work. I, I, I agree with Ashley. These, these yeah. three conventions at the moment run in, well, Possibly force. I'm not sure if Wales Con's back on again this year. Yeah, yeah. And they're called, I think it's FearCon, isn't it? That's yeah, FearCon, that's right. So there's four conventions running, really, every year now in the UK, which is fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. Um, it's a good way of bringing everybody together. As well, and not only that, it's working within... I mean, I, I can mention that Paraforce 
does work closely with a, another convention and we are networking abroad as well. Um, we got power. I've not got to mention Sean Paraforce Holland. Yes. You know, that came about because of Paraforce UK and we're helping uh, Gert. If you're listening, Gert, big hello to you, Guy. Um, we're helping Gert as much as we can as well, sort of behind the scenes. So, um, you know, it's not just what we do here in the UK. We have no. got our fingers in pies abroad, but we don't eat the pies because we get too fat. Yes. <laughs> we're just we're nibbling those pies at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Where, for, obviously for the people who are listening, where do you see Paraforce being in the next few years? Um, I think it will be quite successful. Um, I think um, we will still pr- try and promote um, the UK. And, um, you know, what people don't realise is this year we had, a, a we call it a raffle. It weren't really a raffle, was it? It was like, um, yeah, tell it, tell it yeah. <laughs> and it was, it was to give, um, you know, the new team starting up um, or if you've been doing it for years or if you're a, a, a guy that does it on your own or whether you're a medium or whatever, it gave people the chance to come and do a presentation <coughs> of oh, Excuse me. Oh, dear. You want to cut down those fags, Sean? <coughs> That's drink down the wrong hole. <laughs> but, yeah, no, we, we try and promote everybody, not just... Yeah. Not just people that may be doing it for a long time, but anybody and everybody. We try and promote you. So we, we started that this year. And I can see that side of it as well growing. Can yeah, you? Definitely. definitely. Because, I mean, personally, my personal opinion is I think that your unknown investigator, the guy that or the lady that goes out there week after week after week investigating and researching and... Yeah really getting involved in it has got as much to say, if not more, than these people that you see on TV week in, week out. Yeah, I call them the young sun heroes. The, yeah, the, the You know, the people that, that do a lot, you know, whether it's arranging events to just a small group of you. It could be anybody, you know, it doesn't matter what you do. If you've got something to say, we want to hear it. We'll listen, yeah. we'll, put it up, we'll put you up there. And I think that, that side of it, I mean, once upon a time, the UK used to lead um, paranormal investigations and ghost hunting and the supernatural. Uh, And now I think we've fallen on the wayside a little bit. I don't know why that is. I don't know whether it's because of media and what they do in the States and the TV programs, who knows, but we just don't seem to be there anymore. I I think it's to do with the media. It's like, I mean, we spoke earlier on off air, the program that started tonight, that um, celebrity haunted mansion, what they've got US reality stars like uh, Jason Hawes and Jack Osborne presenting a UK show. Why didn't they approach some UK paranormal investigators to do a UK show? I think you know what? it's you know overlooked. What? I'm going to put out a poll, right? I think we should petition these channels and get Ryland Clark doing it. I like Ryland, he did all right last time. Sorry, did I say that? Oh, sorry. Yeah, he said that out loud. <laughs> no, but, no, but he, did, he did, you know, the last one they did at Readout Fault with Ryland. Yeah. yeah. He actually did surprise me. Yes, he's one of these celebrity presenters, but he actually conducted himself in a way that, I mean, me, as I look at him, I think, oh, oh sweet old Ryland. He's like, you know, the adopted son, but he doesn't know. Um, <laughs> but he, he did okay, and he actually did the show proud. It was the people that were on it that sort of went a bit, a Ryan, let's say, yeah. um, but Ryland, and actually, you know, um, Raps went in the week after they were there, and I spoke to the people that run it at, at Readout Fault, and I yeah. asked her, what did she, she met them all, and I asked her, what did you think, and, and all the rest of it, and she said, well, she, I, I can't repeat what she said, but she <laughs> did say that Ryland actually did surprise her and he was the only one there that she could say that had any common sense. Let's yeah, just put it that way. Actually took it seriously. Yeah, he did his yeah. job and he did it well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I appreciate that these people that they get presented in these shows are well-known, the celebrities, so to say. But I think it's about time, like you said, the channels such as Really, Living TV, etc., 
took notice and realised that there's just as good investigators and presenters here in the UK. Yeah, yeah. Well, w- watch this space. I think more and more and more will come up. You don't know what's around the corner, so we'll just have to keep our eyes peeled and see what comes up. Yeah. Eyes and peeled, fingers crossed. And hopefully the public will get behind and support these guys that do a good job, you know? Definitely, definitely. I think that's why it needs public support to, like I say, realise that British people know as much as the Americans, if not more. Well, I don't, I don't even think it's that. I think it's the fact that we've allowed ourselves to become stagnant. Is that the right word? Yeah. If yeah. you ask people, have you heard of the SPR? Is it the SPR? They'll say, who's that? Have you heard of ASSAP? Who are they? You know? Yeah. So yeah. Um, it's it's a bit like that. <laughs> yeah, I think Ashley's sort of hit it a bit there. He's, he's just said in the chat room, we're still there. It's just research being done. Isn't it sensational? It doesn't fit the TV format. Exactly. Exactly. It's, yeah. I mean, a lot of investigators, all of us really would love to see a true investigation on TV, but it's it's not a ratings puller at the end of the day. Uh, it'll be boring. Yeah. It yeah. would be boring. <laughs> Bottom Definitely. line. Yeah. I mean, it's like Mark's just said as well in the chat room, we have more history than them. It's The amount of Americans that have come over that we've spoke to, and they just cannot believe the age of some of our buildings and our history compared to what they've got. Yeah, yeah. No, that's true. That's true. Um, and also um, the events that happened in the, within those buildings. Um, yeah. People talk about the stone tape theory. Uh, well, I won't say what I want to say about that, but um, <laughs> I can blow that out the window. In fact, I can blow that out the window with, pe- with about six or seven witnesses. You know, people talk about why don't you see ghosts of cavemen, right? Yeah, yeah. Neolithic man has been spotted. Fact. Honestly, with my hand on my heart, and I took this uh, news to a person that used to talk a lot about the stone tape theory and wants to go to this place so desperately. Yeah. But, but well, I mean, so... we can, both myself and you, we know that Neolithic man does haunt due to an investigation that we've both been involved in. Yes. And also... Um, uh, you know these apparitions of inanimate objects uh, people are forgetting about that sort of thing as well you don't hear it reported very much you know Sutton Who apparently once a year the Viking ship appears yeah. um, there's uh, planes all sorts the horse you know the, the, the horse and carriages that that go past and all this yeah, it yeah. All seem, it's all seemed to have died a death I think because Nobody's looking for it anymore. They've forgotten about those and just want the full-bodied apparition and I've met a ghost sort of thing. Yes, exactly. It's, it's a, like I say, it's a strange subject when like inanimate objects appear, but nobody ever seems to want to see them or mention them. It's always the, yeah. the apparitions. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, you know, Sean, I mean, we're going to hit the supernatural side of it now. You know, um when you went home from an investigation up this end, my neck of the woods, and you saw that cat run across the road. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm so I'm so jealous because I want to see it as well. But um... yeah, for, for our listeners who don't know that story, I've been down to Vivalandis for the weekend. Um, as me and Sarah in the car driving back, it was just coming past Rutland Waters. And it was quite foggy, and all of a sudden, running across the road was all I could describe as a big black cat. It was, the height was level with the bonnet of the car to slam the brakes on, and then it disappeared across the road into a hedge on the other side of the road. And it was one of them points where I thought, why haven't I got a dash cam? Which I've now got. Yeah. (laughs) But it was, I was in awe, it was crazy. And I didn't realise until I got home and Googled black cats in the UK that Rutland Water is renowned for sightings. Yeah, yeah. But also, like, the, you know, tie it in with that. This is the crypto side of me coming out, you know, now. Ash, Ash, Ashley will know more about this than me. But, um, you know, the, the black shuck, you know, that has been reported throughout history. Has it always been a black cat? You know. Yeah, yeah. Could well have been. Could well have been. You. I think there's that much out there, like I say, getting into the, the supernatural side of it. There's that much out there that we 
you just can't explain. No. And that's so. what Paraphors does. It brings the other elements into um, a conference that we try and sort of just jog them a little bit. And, you know, we had yeah. uh, Malcolm there for, for two years and he, he's, oh, he's done so much, that guy. He's, he's amazing. But, um, you know, he, he would be the one of the, the best guys to talk about. He's written books and all sorts about it, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, so in Paraphors, we like to try and bring a bit of everything in, not just the paranormal, a bit of everything, the UFO researchers, everything. As much as a mix of people that we can get there, we try to get there. Because it all sort of comes under the same umbrella, sort of, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, it's all the supernatural world, uh, which yeah. paranormal is just a small part of it. And if we can help um, ignite a passion or light a fire and get, the, you know, uh, an interest in in a certain subject, I think yeah. we've all, we've done our job, haven't we, Sean? You know, yeah. try to get a, an interest in unexplained phenomena. Yes, <laughs> that's a big word. It was, wasn't it? <laughs> I can't say that word. But uh, no, I, I think that um, also it's a, it's a place to come and pick, meet like-minded people, network. Yeah. If you've got a problem and you don't know where to go, you could, I don't know, meet people at the conventions and not feel stupid telling them about your problem. Oh, I think I'm being hounded by this. Yeah, I don't know what to do. Oh, yeah. I know, just the person that you can speak to. Well, go and fetch someone or, you know, whatever. I, mean, I think we've been really lucky with our guest speakers over the years that we've had, that all of them have been so friendly and open to speak to all of our guests that have come to see them. It's absolutely brilliant. It's like one big family. Do you know what, Sean? My my favourite part of Paraforce UK to date has got to be the chance that I got to get, my, get our own back on Barry Fitzgerald. <laughs> yeah, with, with, <laughs> with Joe. With Joe Chin, because, <laughs> Joe, I mean, these are things that the public don't get to know about, really. And it's Joe's had a conversation with me about um, Barry and what they used to do on GHI, and they'd always play pranks on each other. And it was normally the pranks played on Joe, which he didn't mind, you know, because yeah. he's, he's such a lovely guy. But we had the opportunity to play the, one of the biggest pranks back on Barry, which we did. We did it... Um, off camera and away from public but it's these um memories that are forged that will always be with me and i think the public uh, that come as well is just the same the fact that they've i don't know i sat down and had a cup of tea with joe chin and we chatted about tesco's and what yeah. the tesco stores are about you know anything you know <laughs> it doesn't have to be about paranormal well, it's, it's, that's one of the the things that sticks with me is the the people that come up to you saying, I can't believe that I've just had a chat with Barry Fitzgerald for half an hour. He's a really nice guy. Who's... Because I think they've got this preconception that these TV stars and the well-known paranormal investigators are going to be ego-driven and aloof and won't speak to them. And I think they, they love it, the fact that they can sit and talk to them. Yeah. Do you know what? That, that point in, in mind, um, I remember last year Barry coming up to me, and I'm sure this. This guy that I'm going to mention now won't mind me saying this at all. Um, I call him Mulder. What's his name? Paul Mould? Paul Mould, yeah. I'm old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Barry saw Paul Mould for the first time. And he Barry come and he raced up to me and he said, Vivian, 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 see your man over there. He looks like Rhaegar from Vikings. I went, what? <laughs> He said, "I'd love a picture with him. I'd, can you, can you, can you just sort of happen to catch me walking past him? I'd, I'll tell you what. I'll go and, I'll go and ask him if he minds having a picture taken with you. Went, would you? Would you? Would you? And I went, yeah. And Barry was more excited to meet Paul Mould than he was <laughs> that Paul Mould was to meet him. <laughs> it was just so, it was so surreal. And you know, it's little things like that. You know, yeah. Paul Mould is like. And when I told him afterwards, and Barry had uh, had gone. He says, oh, he says, that's really nice. He says, uh, he says he's a skinnier version of me, but I can see what he's saying that. You know, <laughs> it was quite funny. It, and, and it was brilliant. I think Barry's one of the nicest people in the paranormal, my personal opinion. He's he'll do anything for you. I mean, sadly, he can't make it this year because I think it's Chris family christening at the same weekend. Yeah, yeah. But I'm pretty sure that we won't be able to keep him away for 2019. No, no. <laughs> I, th I think... Um, he might be making uh, plans to sort of contact us at any minute, say, 
give us a date for next year. I'll throw you some dates so I can make it. I can see that happening, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And Donna as well with him. Donna, she's she's lovely, bless her. Yeah, yeah. Good uh, a good, another good thing I think about Paraforce, the amount of people that have messaged me and said I've made such good friends over that weekend, they've turned up on their own, not knowing anybody. Yeah. And all of a sudden, they're part of a family. David Cook is an example. Yes. He made so many friends, turned up on his own, bless him, and he made so many friends last year, he can't wait for this year's again. Oh, shall we announce David Cook? Yes. How can we do it on your show? It's a bit naughty. It is a bit naughty, but yeah, I'm sure we can. Okay, shall I do it then so you won't be in trouble? Yeah. (laughs) You heard it here first on Power Search Radio, on, on the Supernatural Chat Show with Sean Cadman. David Cook will be our official broadcaster for Paraforce UK. Yes. Only because we can't, um, Parafor- uh, Parasearch are going to be busy elsewhere, but um, we we are, we have uh, locked him in. So uh, you heard it here first. Remember that. Yes. Also, I mean, obviously with um, Kerry is going to be speaking at Paraforce this year. Oh, yeah. Now, so it, it'd be quite a, a busy weekend if we ask Parasearch to be our radio station for and this also, year. I think Kerry's Kerry's talk. I'm really. I mean, I've been talking to Lucy Albrighton, a good friend of mine, last night, and we are so excited. Um, we're looking forward to Kerry's talk out of all the guest speakers. Um, yes. not, not being biased, but um, we're, we're looking forward to to what she uh, wants to, uh, has to talk about and. Uh, yeah, no, we're really excited. We are Definitely. really excited. That, that's, one, that's one talk. I'm not doing any work, Sean. I'm not going anywhere or seeing to anyone. I'm listening to Kerry, I'm afraid. Yeah, that, definitely, definitely. I mean, that, same, I mean, working off that, last year was for ourselves, for me and you, I think it was because it was our second year and we knew more how it all ran, it was quite a lot easier than the first year. The first year we seemed to run around like lunatics for the whole two days yeah. I think last year just didn't seem so bad for us personally. No, and I think the venue helped as well because yeah, yeah. of how it was situated and the different areas you could go to and and it just like, you know, we, I, I know that you would agree, Sean, that we are quite laid back and it's like, no, yeah. you've got to do this or you've got to do that. It's just like, go where you want, do what you want within reason, just don't upset anyone, you know, otherwise we'll have, yeah. <laughs> we'll have to... <laughs> throw you out but yeah that's it it's i think that's another thing that makes paraforce what it is that once people walk through that door they're free to do what they want yeah yeah there's no rules regulation obviously like say you behave yourselves you don't burn the place down or start fighting with anybody enjoy it have fun well i think also i mean the the vip um the VIP package that we put together where people get to um, have something to eat, go and investigate or just chillax and, yeah. you know, chat or whatever you want to do. I mean, I think that also helps people feel at ease, those that that come as a VIP, because yeah. they're not being they're not being told you can't do this, you can't do that. We, we don't mind. Just just enjoy yourself. It's, it's your event. We put this on for you. Yeah. You know, um, and they can't believe that one. I <laughs> think last year somebody was saying, "Where do I have to go now?" So, well, what you, have you had something to eat? Go and get something to eat. And what do I do after that? Well, do you fancy doing the ghost hunt, or do you want to chillax, or do you just want to stand at the bar and have a drink? It's up to you. <laughs> it's, I, mean, I got that as well after after everybody had the the food and everything. They're like, well, when, "When does the investigation start? Where do we go first? It's like, well. Starts wherever you want to go and go wherever you like. They're like, really? It's like, yeah, just yeah. do what you take your cut off. You go, do what, investigate wherever you like. And people couldn't believe it. I think they thought they were going to be herded around like cattle. No, I mean it, it's nice if, like, say, if somebody was on their own or they didn't know where to go or what to do. You know, we'd take them and, and show them, and they'd get into it, and then they'd be chatting to somebody else that's doing something. They'd go off with them, and nobody's feeling, oh, well, they were with me a minute ago. It's not yeah. like that. It's not no. like that at all. No. It's, it's like it's the a- people we have helping us. Like last year, um, Andy Radley and his team, 
did a fantastic job of guiding people. People wanted to know where, what activity had happened. They guided them to that area. Yeah. And it really worked. Same as this year, we'll have Naomi and Kelly yeah. doing the same sort of thing. It, they're not telling people what to do. They're just they're there as guides to help them. Yeah, go here or do that. Or, and yeah. I, I think people enjoy it like that. I think so. I think so. I mean, if but, we're wrong, please tell us. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we got a lot of good comments and we have the comments book out and people can email us or they can Facebook us or they can do us independently or through the Paraforce or whatever. Um, I think um, we're going to be starting a, a bi-weekly live thing, aren't we, Sean? So people yes, can put yeah. questions to us. Um, so we'll do it independently. So if they don't want to speak to me, they can speak to you. And vice versa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that will be happening every, probably every two weeks. Either, we'll either do it together some weeks or independent, yeah. depending on what we're doing. We'll just um, mix, it up, mix it up a bit and, and keep yeah. them on their toes. Yeah. What we're looking at was that, was it a Monday night? I can't was, remember. Yeah, so it'll probably be a Monday night, around about eight, half eight, and we'll do just half an hour live, Facebook Live for people to put questions to us yeah. and whatever they want. Yeah. So, what, right, well, we'll, we'll jump back onto Paraforce again. Oh, we've, got, oh, we've only got 15 minutes. Right. Oh, <laughs> so you do talk a lot. Oh, I know, just waffle <laughs> and waffle. <laughs> That's why we love you. Yeah. Um, Right, if the, quick back onto the paranormal. If there was anywhere in this country that you could in, investigate for a full night that you haven't yet been, where would it be? Ah, oh, um, 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 I don't know. Um, um, that's a hard one. Yes, <laughs> I've got I've got my favourite place that I've investigated, and I've been really lucky to do that. And I will go back and I'll be doing that again. But it won't be a full night. I would love to do a full night there. But I have to be grateful with what the bones that I get thrown, if you like. And I have to <laughs> hand that feeds me when he, when he does let me in. Um, but, oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Put you on the spot there. You have. Um, I would like, I don't know, I would like to go underground to um, a disused coal mine. That'd be good. There are, a few, there are a few, not tunnels, not tunnels, actual yeah. coal mines that are not working anymore. They're more the museum-y type things. Mm. I think a coal mine would be interesting. Yeah. I, I, I might come out black, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I'll just have to <clears> you know. I think my, if I had a choice, if I could do anywhere, I think it'd be unrestricted access to the cave system underneath Nottingham. But we've done part of it, haven't we? We've done a little bit, yeah, but there's miles and miles and miles, virtually covers the whole of Nottingham, and rumour and old legend has it that it even goes as far as Wollerton Hall. I've got it unrestricted, it'd be amazing. Have they bricked some of it up, though? They've blocked parts of the... I think so, it, I don't know... They've blocked parts of it up because some of it, it's strange land laws, but some of it is actually owned by the people who have the houses on top of it. Oh, right, okay. It's classed as something to do with it's their cellar, even right, though they okay. don't have access to it themselves. Yeah. Because it's underneath their property, so it's, a lot of it's all gated off and things. Yeah. Uh, they're, still, they're still exploring it themselves. Down yeah. there. Unrestricted access would be incredible, I think, for that. What we need to do is join an archaeology team, Sean, and we'll be there. We'll be yes. in there. Yeah. Yeah. What about worldwide, then? Oh, now <laughs> you're talking. But you um, can only pick one. <laughs> oh, well, I'm working, um, I'm beavering behind. Can you still hear me? Yes, yeah. Right. I'm beavering behind in the background to try and um, get an event together for 2019. And it won't be a public event or anything like that, but I am looking abroad. So um, there are a couple that are on my hit list. And if I can get in, I'll be a very, very happy bunny. Um, but if I can go anywhere in the world, no bars hold, no... Um, restrictions in the way no red tape it let's say it would be the Taj Mahal in India 
Uh, so that's a different one. The Taj Mahal in India, uh, that, that always holds a fascination with me. I mean, I've been lucky enough to do other part places a world in the world and go in after hours and and get access to things. But the Taj Mahal is just one of those places that, I don't know, I, I'm drawn to that place. Yeah. I think mine would be the catacombs. Would it? Yeah, unrestricted access down there with a very, very, very big piece of ball of wool. <laughs> yeah. I take don't forget to take your uh, supplies, your sandwiches, your packs, you know. Yeah, yeah, we're fine. I'm down there for a few days, I'll be well away. <laughs> oh, so, you know, I do, I do like, I do like India. I, yeah. There's lots of places there. I mean, I, I suppose because I'm half caste as well, and um, my father is is Indian, and I know a bit about the history and what happened over there. So I'm I'm sort of got a little bit biased, let's say. But um, <laughs> that, yeah. that'd be a good one. It's different. It's not one that everybody would think of. No, no. But I, I, you know, I've seen spirit abroad. Um, I've actually even seen a, a, a possession, believe it or not, in India that absolutely fricked the life out of me. I sacked around me telling me about that one. Yeah, it? and I was quite young when I saw that. It yeah. was quite, quite horrific. But um, when people tell you that possession doesn't exist, they're lying. <laughs> 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 it, it's varying forms, isn't it? But yes. I did, I did yeah. see, a, I did see a horrible thing in India that stayed with me for the rest of my life. Oh yes. It has me, and you only told me about it. <laughs> I mean, it made me scared to watch The Exorcist for years. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> I wouldn't watch it. I was too scared, but I, I did, did watch The Exorcist. It's one of my favourite films now, so... It is a pretty good film, that. I'm just going to mention quick, uh, when we finish at nine o'clock, if you refresh your page and then you're able to listen to Haunted Histories with Penny... Tonight, she's talking about the Winchester House, which I think that's going to be a pretty interesting show. So don't forget, when we finish at nine, I'll try and finish on time for you, Penny. When we finish at nine, if you just uh, refresh the page, then I carry on listening to Penny's show afterwards. So how can people get tickets for this little event, this Paraforce thing that's happening then, Viv? Well, for this little event that's happening, I suggest uh, people should go to the website, www.paraforceuk.com. All the information is there, guest speakers, vendors, even the Paraforce Awards. Mustn't forget that. Oh, yes. Oh, get yourself a scary Mary. That's not so scary. I mean, funnily enough, for a fun thing that we've had some oh some hassle over the Power Force Awards, people saying that we're putting people in competition with each other. It's nothing like that, is it? It's a bit of fun. Exactly. You know, it's a bit of fun, and we don't we don't Power Force don't choose the winners. It's you no. guys that choose the winners, and it, it's it's just a bit of fun. It's to give something back to the community. They get a scary Mary uh, that's not so scary. And it's just a little keepsake. It doesn't mean anything. It means it doesn't mean anything at all. Apart the people that win it, love it. Yeah. Absolutely love it because, like you say, it's the public recognition. The public vote for these awards. Nothing to do with us. The only one we have a say in is the um, outstanding achievement award. The rest of it's all down to public votes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and um, don't forget the prestigious award, which is the Paranormal Pin-Up Guy and the Paranormal Pin-Up yes. Girl. Everyone wants that title. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So we've got quite a few multiple award winners as well. We'll we be have. vying to keep their titles this year. So if you, anybody wants to vote for you can even vote for yourself. Yeah. And it's categories from investigator, magazine, researcher, YouTube channel, even logos. If you just jump onto the website, www.paraforceuk.com, jump onto the tab that says awards and get your votes in. Yeah, and there's details on there of how to enter. I mean, if you're putting photographs, um, how what format to send them in, any yeah. film footage, and you never know. I think last year a member of the uh, press was there. You yes. never know what could happen. 
I'm not saying was... I'm not saying that they will, but you never know. Uh, I mean, we didn't even know about that till afterwards. But... Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> Members of the press paying to come. If they're paying, they could all come. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you reckon the sun will give us fifty minutes for a day entry? Oh, you never know. We'll, we'll message them and ask them. <laughs> I mean, our Penny's just put best presenter of haunted histories. <laughs> yes, get your votes in for Penny. I mean, she deserves yeah. it. She works bloody hard, if I do say so myself, and she puts yeah. on a very good show. So yes. get your votes in. And just as a side note, you can't vote for, even though this show is absolutely incredible, you can't vote for me because Powerful staff are not allowed to have awards. The only awards that we can be nominated in are the pin up ones. That's is, it. Is that, is that a plug? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> vote for Sean, vote for Sean. Uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be able to accept an award as for radio presenter, just the same as Viv wouldn't be able to accept one for medium. We can't accept one for investigators. So please don't vote for Parafor staff. No, no. I think it's all, it's all on there, isn't it, on the website? Yes, right? yeah, yeah. But, so, yeah, just go for it. Get on there and vote for yourselves. Yeah. Or just get on there and tell us what you've been doing, what you've been up to. Just we're interested. Message us. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, and put just Carrie's just reminded me actually. Haunted histories that follows at nine o'clock. Penny's actually talking with is it Dalen from the Ghost Brothers? Woohoo. Yes, so uh, he'll be talking about the Winchester House. That's gonna be very interesting. Very do interesting. Think, do you think she's gonna ask him where the saying comes from? Um, it's time to pop, was it pop the trunk? <laughs> uh, you can tell her now. Tell us to ask I, that. I think, I think I think people should tune in and find out. Yes, yeah, definitely. Refresh this page and have a listen. So, what does everybody have to look forward to at this year's Paraforce? Oh, too much to mention. Everything. <laughs> Everything. The food, the food, the seaside, the cosplay element that we've got involved with it. You can come dressed up if you want to. Yeah. You know, um, I'm thinking about doing a Game of Thrones tri- tribute. You never know, or a pirate. I've decided yet. Mm. Yeah, so you know, if you're into fancy dress and you want to come to Paraforce to get into the the vibe of the cosplay, feel free. Wear whatever you like. There's going to be stormtroopers there. There's going to be Daleks there. There's going to be all sorts there. Yeah, and me. Yes, and they'll even be the Paraforce Scarecrow. Hey, Sean, should we dress you up? Me? Yeah. I don't know about that. <laughs> I'll work on him. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so you can come and shake hands with the Paraforce Scarecrow. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean, the venue, this year's venue, I think it's a really good venue. Nice and open, plenty of space for everybody. By the seaside. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can go on a donkey. Yeah. Come, yeah. come, come as a gang of pirates and scare everyone at the, you know, the seaside coast. That's fine. We don't mind. No, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. So, I mean, if you haven't got your ticket yet, why not get on the website www.paraforceuk.com. And get your ticket. There's limited VIP tickets. We're only putting 50 VIP tickets up this year. And so, you, um, there's no big VIP tickets on the door. There'll no. be more. You'll pay more on the door. So get them in. Get your payment. You know, get your tickets in now while you can, and just save yourself a few quid. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the ticket prices go up for the day passes by five pound on the door. Yeah. So if you can only make it during the days, and you, you don't want to take advantage of the VIP package. I'd get your day tickets in advance as well. Save yourself ten pound over the weekend. Yeah. So what is it? I think what's the price? Is it ten pound per day, fifteen pound for both days on a day pass? It is. Yeah, it's still so, cheap. It's still yeah, absolute bad. bargain. I, swear, I mean, that goes back in a, a good way to what sort of guests we bring over. Because if we brought these huge guests over from the states, you've not only got their airfare, but a lot of them also charge quite large fees to appear. Yeah. Which means putting ticket prices up, which is something we don't want to do. No. And, so, and we've got some special guest people turning up. I mean, look yes. out for that. That's that's a biggie. Um what, Definitely. if and when it gets when it gets announced, um you'll be pleasantly surprised. Yes, it will. So thank you very much, Viv, for coming on. 
Thank you, Sean, my uh, brother. That's okay, and we shall chat soon. Um, and I'll now have to hand you over. Ready for Haunted Histories. Uh, Penny will be happy that I'm actually finishing on time. This is good. Normally, you go over by five minutes, but she's lovely, so she don't mind. But there we are. Thank you very much for listening tonight. Massive thanks to Viv for coming on and chatting with me, and I shall speak to you all again next Wednesday. You've been listening to the Supernatural Chat Show. Thank you very much. Good night, and over to Kerry. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to join us for more shows throughout the week. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and the World Wide Web to keep up to date with all the shows right here on Parasearch Radio.